When you think about the Holocaust, who do you think of? You might think of the six million Jews killed during the Holocaust. But while Jews were indeed the largest group of victims murdered during the Holocaust, they were not the only group the Germans targeted and killed in mass numbers. Of the about 5.7 million captured prisoners of war from the Soviet Union, around 3 million died from a variety of different causes. Soviet prisoners of war, or POWs, were the second largest victim group of the Germans during the Holocaust. In this video, we will learn why the Germans targeted and killed Soviet POWs, what the experiences of Soviet POWs were, how they were treated, and how historians understand these experiences. Even before World War II began, the Nazis planned to enlarge their territory by forcefully taking new land, land they called Lebensraum, meaning living space. The Nazis viewed the expansion of their land as necessary to grow the so-called Aryan race, which they believed to be the superior race. The land to the east of Nazi Germany, particularly the lands of Ukraine in the Soviet Union, represented the space Hitler and the Nazis wanted to take over for resettlement and grain to feed Germany. But the Nazis believed that the population of the Soviet Union was in the way of their territorial ambitions. However, the coming violence between the Nazis and Soviets did not simply take on the form of a more traditional military conflict. The Nazis viewed the communist government of the Soviet Union as a rival type of political system to the politics of Nazi Germany and the ideology of Nazism. Not only did the Nazis despise the government system of the Soviet Union, but they also viewed Soviet citizens as a racial enemy and Slavic people as inferior. They believed Soviets were a subhuman opponent to the Aryan race, which they believed needed space to settle. The Soviets were not targeted alone, however. The Nazi theory of Judeo-Bolshevism claimed that Soviets, or Bolsheviks, the founders of the Soviet communist government, and Jews had virtually no difference between them and both were treated as racial enemies of the Germans. The beginnings of the physical horror, torture, and murder of Soviet POWs came directly with the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, called Operation Barbarossa. As the Nazis advanced through the Soviet Union, they captured millions of Soviet prisoners of war. Soviet POWs were held in open-air camps without enough food and very little or no shelter. Prisoners resorted to digging holes in the ground to escape the brutal climates and conditions they otherwise were essentially unprotected from. The extreme lack of sanitation and cleanliness led to the rampant spread of diseases, which eventually became the primary reason for the deaths of Soviet POWs. In October 1941, about 5,000 Soviet prisoners perished every day. Prisoners were constantly in peril either through the absence of shelter, adequate food, clothing, disease, or a combination of all these realities. The transportation of Soviet POWs also resulted in mass deaths. To move large numbers of prisoners to the camps, the Germans primarily used trains. Prisoners sometimes received no food at all, while tightly packed into open-air train cars unprotected from the climate, especially the brutal cold of the winter. While a substantial number of Soviet POWs died from lacking care and disease, many others the Germans shot in large numbers, specifically those deemed too burdensome to provide with what little care the Germans did. Official policy stated that Germans needed to use whatever force they felt to be necessary to quash the supposed resistance of Soviet POWs. As several historians have found, Soviet POWs were not an individual category of prisoner but within the ranks of Soviet POWs were many other categories. For example, Soviet prisoners who were Jewish faced particular cruelty from their German captors, as being Jewish and Soviet was a sort of double crime in the eyes of the Nazis. The Commissar Order stated that Soviet political officials within the larger group of Soviet POWs were to be killed immediately. For the Nazis, not all Soviet POWs were equally viewed and treated and their fates were not all the same. The concentration and death camps that you may associate with the Jews the Germans murdered were first built for Soviet POWs. Specifically, in Auschwitz and Majdanek, Germans forced Soviet POWs to engage in labor activities, such as constructing industrial centers and other camp facilities. 
The Germans also first used Zyklon B, the deadly poison used in the gas chambers of death camps, on a group of some 600 Soviet POWs. The incredibly deadly results of using that gas, first on Soviet POWs, along with certain other prisoners, showed the Nazis that Zyklon B could be used to kill mass numbers not only of POWs, but also Jews. It is important to note who participated in the killing of Soviet POWs. For many years, scholars believe that the Wehrmacht, or German General Army, was not to blame for the mass murder of Soviet prisoners, and that instead Nazi special forces specifically designed to kill Soviets killed the majority of Soviet POWs. Scholars have more recently determined that the Wehrmacht actually killed the majority of Soviet POWs. Understanding that ordinary soldiers could, and did, torture and kill prisoners of war helps us to realize that the Holocaust did not only include criminal killers, but also soldiers with no background in murder as well, and that, in viewing a group of people as inhuman and unworthy of life, mass murder can result, as it did during the Holocaust. But did the Nazis' racial view of Soviets as subhuman represent the only reason for the mass death of Soviet POWs? Certain scholars, by looking at sources such as soldier diaries and memoirs, have found that ideology certainly played a critical role, but the conditions of combat at the front were also important. Brutal fighting and ideology mixed to produce violently oriented soldiers who saw Soviet POWs not only as their racial enemy and chief impediment to Lebensraum, but also as the cause of their suffering at the front. As the war continued, and the Germans began to lose ground in the Soviet Union, official policy shifted regarding Soviet POWs. The Germans transferred huge numbers of Soviet POWs into Germany itself or German territories to fill out its depleted workforce that was now fighting in the war. Even though living conditions marginally improved, Soviet prisoners were still forced laborers, and many still suffered from the prior conditions they had left. The assumption that moving soldiers into work would alleviate the mass and cruel suffering of the climate, camps, and their treatment at the hands of the Germans did not materialize. Many POWs continued to die from starvation and climate-produced diseases even after leaving the camps. Yet not all Soviets captured stayed in the workforce. Many engaged in resistance against German authorities and escapes did occur. After World War II, the surviving Soviet POWs who returned to the Soviet Union faced further repression. Instead of being welcomed as heroes or survivors, the Stalinist Soviet Union declared POWs who did not perish during the war as traitors to the government. Hundreds of thousands of former Soviet POWs became prisoners within the Soviet Union, with many sent to gulags or Soviet concentration camps or other forced labor facilities. Those whom the Soviet government did not send to camps or kill outright were not free from hostility either. The neighbors of returned Soviet POWs treated them with suspicion and derision. The government prohibited former POWs from certain work, education, and housing opportunities. Why is it important to remember Soviet prisoners of war? If we want to understand the Holocaust in all its complexity, we must move beyond certain assumptions. Of course, the Jews were the main victim of the Holocaust and the Nazis, but the deaths of over 3 million Soviet POWs shows us not only the brutal extent of Nazi racism and violence, but also provides further evidence that depriving a group of any sense of humanity or value can result in mass murder or genocide.